here on behalf of Team Dominica Community High School. This seed has been planted and I would exalt all whether you have not been part of the initiation to water the seed, to take care of the seed, to give the seed natural manure. We're moving away from the chemical manure, especially if you're the nature isle of the Dom Dominica. So pen manure, chicken manure, whatever manure we can get so that it can be reach a stage of full blossoming and a blossoming that we shall be all proud of. The individual who is heading this effort, and I must say, I'm not taking away from the efforts of the individuals, but Curtis, who has since passed, had tried very much to get this going. And I'm happy that Mona and her team has taken up the mantle and to bring it to fusion. So Miss Mona St. Louis, administrator of Team Dominica Community High School, will now come forward to give brief remarks. Welcome her, please. I'm happy that we are on day two of our week of activity. Um, it is really a joy knowing that it is taking place. And um, as the week continues, we look for more and better things to come. This evening's lecture is very important because it gives us information about our school, our alma mater, and um, let us hope as the evening proceeds, we will have more persons joining us. I want you to sit back, relax, and please, I hope you have pen and paper so you can take notes. Once again, thanks for coming. And like you, I have my pen and paper to take as much note as I can. Enjoy the lecture. Good night. And what I have to say is that every activity that is put on for this week, we should see incremental growth. Yesterday we had the mass at the St. Alphonsus Parish. And at least I see the group, the group is much a little bigger than it was yesterday. It was part of the normal congregation, but when I check the numbers, and I will exalt everyone here, even while you're here, to send a message to one of your students, to one of your parents. Doesn't necessarily have to be only students here, but the parents who have benefited. And the number of chairs which we have here out cannot outnumber the number of individuals who should be here tonight. So the next activity, day three, make it your business to ensure that you are there and you encourage somebody to be there. So as Ms. Sentry has told us, and of course the program says, we are going to have a presentation by Dr. Lennox Honeychurch. Now I'll just share a little joke with you, Dr. Lennox Honeychurch. At the time we went to school at the Convent High School, the St. Mary's Academy did not do English literature. So there was a, a, a sort of relationship between the Convent High School and St. Mary's Academy, not DGHS, okay, DGS, Convent. And the boys came across to the convent to do sciences, etc. Lennox came across to do English literature. And we were in five two at the time. And we had a Peace Corps teaching us. And we were doing a literature book, um, Austin. And a question was asked to us. Remember, he's the only male in the classroom. 
and all the females we are wrecking our head to find out what is the answer, what is the answer. Here Lennox pops up. She was not well and there were sentences in the paragraph which indicated what had happened. But it's not today. We were innocent little things, we couldn't pick that up. Lennox pops up. The lady pregnant. <laughs> and all of us there, oh my God, we feel in a shame now. Because Lennox is the one giving the answer, maybe about, maybe about 19 or 20 of us in the class, and we could not give the answer. And he also had a little, little motorbike. So sometimes the free periods in the gardens there, we get in a little ride on the motorbike. But Lennox has always been a resourceful person since at school, and then he has proven so to the Commonwealth of Dominica in his role as historian, teacher, and commentator, carnival lover, costume maker, artist, literary analyst, commenting on issues that affect the Commonwealth of Dominica, and the Caribbean, and he has made a name for himself through the dint of hard work. Okay, you hear his name, Lennox Honey Church, the only Honey Church in Dominica. And once upon a time, one of my history students asked the children to name <laughs> Neg Mawa, and Lennox Honey Church was one of the Neg Mawas. <laughs> Okay, and as I tell people, when you go around in the Caribbean, you see many, quote unquote, you see his complexion, families of that nature. But in Dominica, they present the white class to us in Dominica. And when we went to school, we never saw Lennox's complexion, never. It never, you know, occurred to us. We just saw Lennox as one of us, and Lennox, lived in Dominica with his parents, especially his father, as one of us. As he was coming up today, one of the people at the back said they thought he didn't hear, look at him going up there, he looking just like Mr. Ted Honey Church. And then he shared a joke with me, the same thing when he passes by with church, they say the same thing, get Ted Honey Church, come Ashila. You know? So Lennox has done well for himself as a historian and an anthropologist. Those of us who book the Dominica story, very easy book to read, but has a lot of historical facts in it. And for many students, that is the first book that they read at ease as a history book. And it has served not only Dominica well, but the other Caribbean. He has also written the people who came, which they use mostly in the other Caribbean books one and two and three. I did those books when I taught history in Barbados and in Dominica and still use them when I have to help students to help. Mona has had, and her family, has had a very good relationship with Lennox and his family. So yes, he's here doing a professional job, but as he says to me, he's doing it from his heart because of the relationship that his father, his family had with Mona's he has helped us from the inception since we had the launching in July 2021 and tonight he's here to give us a comprehensive presentation on the Dominica Community High School. What I would like us to do is we take our notes while he is speaking and then after we will have the members of the panel. He's not going to speak only if necessary, he's going to do all his speaking, but we're going to look at the members of this panel who will make their contribution. Of course, it will branch off from what he has said, and I am not going to tell the members of the panel how they're going to do their presentation. We have here with us Mr. Mark Marie, and Mark Marie is a UE graduate, a UE lecturer, he writes projects and many other things, proprietor, etc., private sector, the husband of Ophelia, 
and I know he was one of the individuals who assisted in writing the project to begin the Dominica Community High School. And we also have Mr. Pascal, Solomon Pascal, a student, past student, who will be a panelist. He has been into politics and other things, agriculturalists. We have Mr. Fenric Pinard, a student and now a present teacher at the Dominica Community High School, teaches social sciences, history and social studies. So we, and we also have Vigia, a present student, a fourth form student, so make her comfortable because already she tells me she's nervous. A dance and sing and everything, you know, but she's nervous, okay? But we'll make her feel comfortable. So I present to you Miss Dr. Lennox Honeychurch, who is going to make his formidable presentation to us on the history of the Dominica Community High School. I have been asked to give an overview of the Dominica Community High School. I tried to get out of it because I was a teacher, a volunteer teacher at the very early days, at the very beginning, and I really felt that so much has happened to the school after I left and when I was not really associated with it at all, and I begged Mona St. Louis, please let me off. I'm sure there are other people that could do a much better job than me, but she insisted. And so I went through as many documents and papers as I can. One of the problems, of course, is that um, to, to really do justice to those 48 years of, of the school, uh, you would have to go on for hours and you would have to list dozens of names. So I am extremely glad that the panel is here because the way I see it is I'll be giving an overview but the panel will fill in where maybe I did not concentrate on and particularly the more recent period uh, of the school. Uh, so I'm working in conjunction with the panel. I'm delivering a lecture, but my lecture is in a way part of my presentation as a panelist. So let's go back to the 1970s. Uh, in the early 1970s, there was a crisis within the provision of secondary education in Dominica. The expanding primary school network was producing more pupils than the existing secondary schools could absorb. Students were being denied a secondary education because the intake into secondary schools was fixed at the number of spaces available at the opening of each school year, and the cutoff point was determined by the results of the common entrance exams, also known as the 11 plus. The secondary schools available at the time were the Convent High School, founded in 1857, the Dominica Grammar School in 1893, the Wesley High School in 1918, St. Mary's Academy in 1932, and most recently at that time, the opening of the Portsmouth Secondary School, which was the first of the secondary schools outside Roseau, which was launched in 1971. Apart from Portsmouth and surrounding communities, qualifying pupils from other rural areas had to board in Roseau, usually under unsatisfactory and very difficult arrangements. It was obvious that planning for higher education in Dominica had been superseded by events, and the state had put nothing in place to prepare for the shortfall. So while the primary schools were being developed and many being built and enlarged across the island, the secondary school level, the high school level, was not receiving the same attention. Here were a large number of students with the ability to embark on the next stage of their edu education who could not find places to fulfill their potential. The crisis caught the attention of a number of parents and also um, Mrs. Jean Finnegan, formerly Jean James, 
who had returned to Dominica with her husband, who was an international development consultant and who had worked in Africa and from where she had gathered much experience from those postings overseas. Her mother was Mabel Moya James, a former Minister of Government, who together with her husband headed a vibrant family open to new ideas. Assessing the situation facing the provision of education in Dominica, Mrs. Finnegan and her early group rallied together parents who were at a loss to decide how to proceed for the benefit of their children's future. It was clear that there was a need for another secondary school, but at the time the government did not have the means to provide for one. It was no use depending on government to provide solutions, and Mrs. Finnegan realized that the parents and their supporters had to take the initiative themselves to get the state to cooperate with their effort where it could. As she stated years later, and I quote, your parents founded a good place for you to continue your education, and we wished nothing more than to make you strive to make the best of the situation in which you found yourselves." Unquote. Under an arrangement made with the St. Mary's Academy, classes began in 1974 in the afternoon using the SMA premises. The SMA had just begun ending their school day at one o'clock because before all secondary schools would continue until four with a lunch break in between. So there was the opportunity to utilize the buildings in the afternoon. But the search continued for a more suitable place that was less in intrusive to their kind hosts, as it was realized that their use of SMA could only be temporary. The first place that housed the school after St. Mary's Academy was the technical wing behind the Dominica Grammar School. This wing had been opened in 1963 as uh, providing technical vocational education to complement the academic education at the school. But what happened was that people, parents particularly, wanted their children to go on the academic stream and unfortunately the technical wing with all its beautiful equipment and machinery languished. And um, the late Mr. Leatham who was the last tutor at the technical wing, was welcoming to the idea of the um, community high school coming into the building and participating there. Um, and he was in the throes of moving to the Clifton Dupini Technical College, which is now the state college at Stock Farm. Although it was expected that academic subjects would form the backbone of the school, there was a determination from the very beginning that the educational experience would be broader than that. Practical agriculture would form an important component. In sports, besides such games as cricket and football, there would be track and field, and also there would be drama, arts and crafts, including pottery and ceramics, because luckily an expert in this field came and joined the school staff. Um, and these would be among the activities. This was an ambitious program indeed. The founding committee had to embark on an appeal for teachers to volunteer to enable the school to be get up and running. These were people who were already teachers during the day, or else uh, had the capability of being teachers on a volunteer uh, basis. It was clear that salaries would be small or none at all. It may be interesting to quickly list some of those pioneering volunteers so as to give an idea of the wealth of skilled persons who came forward for what they knew was to be a worthy cause in as much as they themselves would not get very much recompense. And I'll quickly uh, go through them just to give an idea of those early days. Mrs. Uh, Francis Harris, Nee Burton, Mr. Ezra Dalmet Rimple, who is now deceased, teaching French and Spanish, 
Felix Thomas, who I'm very glad to see here, Practical Agriculture. I'll go on later to uh, explain the circumstances under which Mr. Thomas joined. MacArthur Murray, Agricultural Science, and then Jenny Bone from England, Arts and Crafts, Ray Lynch also, Arts and Crafts, and here we had Alwyn Bully teaching Drama and Arts and Craft. Myself, I was persuaded, my arm was twisted, to teach History, English, and Geography. Uh, Mr. Severin McKenzie, Agriculture and Sports, Aurelius Jolly, Agricultural Science and Practical Agriculture, Rupert Lance, Science, Rupert Sorendo, Science, but interestingly, later in the life of the school, he was Minister of Education in the early 90s, uh, who had to assist with the continuity and the supervision of the school and working with the principal at the time, who was Mrs. Nicholas sitting right here. Uh, there was Mrs. Hernica Patrice Ferrara, Mathematics and Science, Ezra Blondell, Mathematics and Science, Mr. Kinsley Thomas, Mathematics and Science, and Noreen John, sadly deceased, English and Social Studies. Mikey Bruni, who eventually became a lawyer, now deceased, he was teaching mathematics. Marguerite Benjamin, uh, English, Raymond Ostry, Agriculture, Grell Seraphim, Spanish and Sports. There were also professional farmers who volunteered their time and expertise. Prominent among them was Mr. Whitnell Louis, uh, who is still active amazingly at his great age, Mr. Pat Roll, deceased, and Mr. Hesketh Alexander from Delis, who was also a former Minister of Agriculture, um, and he assisted at the time. I'm just giving this quick list so you can see that amazingly here's the school trying to get off the ground and all these leading people are sympathetic to the cause and are willing to give their time uh, even on a voluntary basis. The logo of the school was designed by Alwyn Bully with members of his arts class in the very beginning. It was accepted by the board and at the parents meeting. The brown uniform and style was chosen in the same manner. And here we will pause. I was told that there's going to be a little bit of a display. Is Ms. St. Louis here? We have two students who are dressed in the uh, different outfits. The brown uniform and style was chosen in the same manner. And here we shall pause to see our models display examples of the two successive uniform styles to jolt our memory of what they looked like. So you had the dark brown, and of course the khaki, and the very sensible shirts outside uh, the pants and skirt. Thank you all very much. The one thing that struck people about the community high school was its practicality and its sensible nature. You weren't going to create a, a uniform with all kinds of fancy little buttons and beads and tucking and ties and whatever. This was a practical school and it was felt that it was necessary to make the, the outfit, uh, the uniform, as simple as possible. The logo for the school uh, was designed by Alwyn Bully with members of his class in the very beginning. It was accepted by the board. Oh, well, I've mentioned this already. And also the motto of the school was inspired by lessons that Mrs. Finnegan learned from her experience in Tanzania, where there was a great deal of self-help work going on at the time, Tanzania in Africa. And many of those self-help projects, which she helped to introduce back home in Dominica to the school and the community. It should be noted that the philosophy of working together in cooperatives and helping one another was becoming worldwide at the time. And it was agreed to the motto, self-reliance for a better future. And it was felt that this in itself would be motivational. A board had been established to reflect the connection between the society and the project owners. 
So acceptance by many was built up and maintained because of the democratic approach of every stakeholder being involved, like in meetings and being informed. Parents who attended the first meetings volunteered to be on the board and were subsequently voted in by the general parent meeting. The first chairperson of the board was Mrs. Miranda Prevo, now in Florida, a conscientious civil servant who used her work experience to great effect. Other members were Mrs. M. Lowblack, a member of the Social League, Mr. Carlton Phillip of Carlton Motors, Mr. F. L. A. Charles, Mrs. Mona Piper, and Mrs. Pond. These parents were from the first set of parents and guardians who attended the meetings. The records from the Ministry of Education would be more, more accurately reflect the membership, as the school was required by law to send the board every member's name uh, any time there was a change. The first meetings were made up of the first volunteers serving on the board. Subsequently, others joined the team, including Mr. Vanus John Charles, Mrs. Candia Coderon, Ni Aline, Mrs. Sh Ms. Shirley Pond, Mr. Galloway, and numerous others. The result of all these consultations brought about a working board with a committee of representatives as follows. Uh, representing the different uh, facets of the school. The agricultural program, agriculture and in practice, the fundraising committee, the founder or the representative. These committees developed the program and added other committees. The cooperative bookshop and adult education rep, sports coordinator and PTA representative. All persons on the board had to be vetted by the education division as required by law. The school was registered with the government as a private school open to the public, a government assisted school. So although it had begun as a individual um, and group effort, uh, totally independent of government because government could not come to the fore, they worked in coordination with government over the years. One day, there came a young man, Felix Thomas, from Kings Hill, who had done agriculture at the Technical College, who presented himself and convinced the board of the school that he could do the job. At first, they thought that he was too young, but he showed his tenacity by clearing and preparing a small area in the yard with the help of some of the students for planting. That was the beginning of a successful agricultural practical program, as it can be said, that's where the practical agricultural program began at the community high school. His action proved that he was able to help in that department, and the ongoing solicitation for assistance approved by the board resulted in the school receiving a volunteer from the Canadian University uh, Services Overseas, Sid. Binsley and the organization also donated a van to help with the agricultural school program. So here you had somebody who was more or less full time with agriculture and also the benefit of the van. Felix Thomas brought in an extra bonus as well in his friend, the late Ezra Dalrymple, who accompanied him and offered to teach Spanish and French. He was interviewed and accepted to teach at the school, earning the minimum wage that was being paid at the time. He proved himself to be talented, especially in the teaching of Spanish, which enhanced the school's profile. The van that had been donated by Cusco helped with the selling of the produce in the market. And as Mrs. Finnegan puts it, the immediate miracle at the time was that we were going to have our own building. And that was dreamlike. The board had requested from QSCO, with other issues like paying qualified teachers for the agricultural program, and the appeal was successful. Soon the recognition of what parents and a coordinator could achieve with very little government support was tremendous. And they were able to persuade people like Mr. Mark Marie 
with an MSc in Agricultural Science and a qualified agronomist who had just graduated from UE St. Augustine, Trinidad, to take the agricultural program to the next level. Mrs. Candia Coderon was appointed head of grammar school and could no longer be physically present at the community high school. By then there were two classes and a total of 75 students with a waiting list of over 400 students seeking entry. Because at the beginning, parents were a little unsure about this new setup. But as the school went from strength to strength, their confidence in having their child uh, at the school increased. And so therefore the demand for places in the school also increased. They were being taught in the classrooms of one part of the technical wing. Right before the holiday session of summer 1975, the school received the news of the posting of an arts and crafts teacher from England. I've already mentioned Jenny Bone and also Greg Very. Soon there was a host of enthusiastic volunteers with John John Baptist, lovingly called Jabba, uh, by all as the supervisor in the lead. He um, had been having, uh, he had been recruited by Candia Cordero, and the board was able to continue to recruit other volunteers who by then were able to receive a small stipend per subject. This was fortunate because many were from the secondary schools taking on an afternoon job and were well qualified. As a result, the quality of the education was pretty high as most of the teachers had been to university and the students, like Jabba, who had graduated from the sixth form college, then housed in another section of the technical wing, was still in the same spot behind Windsor Park, wall to the east. Many recall young, enthusiastic people, like I've already mentioned, Ms. Hernika Patrice, Mrs. now Mrs. Ferrara, Ms. Ezra Blondell, and Mr. Kinsley Thomas, both from Collyho, and the late Miss Noreen John from Granby. Although fulfilling the academic requirements, the board considered agriculture, especially practical agriculture, as one of the most important subjects in the school. It served two main purposes. Students could learn how to become successful farmers, or at least part-time farmers, and the best of them learned to love their land and what their island home, Dominica, had gifted to them. For that purpose, the services of well-established farmers were solicited. To mention a few, we recall, as already mentioned, Mr. Whitnell Louis of Coulibistri, the late Pat Rowell of Hillsborough Estate, the late Hesketh Alexander of Delis, who was a former Minister of Agriculture. They would volunteer their time to speak to the students at school and allow students to visit their farms. Many former agricultural students recall how joyful agricultural classes became, and no less than the guavas from the trees by the riverside and the other activities that took place while they were learning their skills. There was also the incentive for a quick dip in the Rosa River at Copt Hall, near where Palm Grove used to be. That was the second place that the school had for carrying on agricultural education. The owner of Copt Hall Estate at the time, Leo Emanuel, agreed that the school could use that portion of land. And like him, many people were generous and encouraging about the program. For besides providing a knowledge of soils, cultivation, and fertility, agriculture also involved learning about the rivers, volcanoes, watersheds, and the surrounding sea for the island's fishing resources. The, the students also later on had another experience with the river because um, there was always the task before or after term of cleaning out their desks and they would carry their desks across the road and into the river and scrub them and wash them because all of this was of course training in their duty and responsibility uh, towards the school. The choice of teachers for that important subject was scarce 
However, with the capable assistance of Candia Corderon, assistant headmistress at Dominica Grammar School, who was a graduate of UE Mona, people were found. It helped that she was also an advocate for relevant changes in the education and curriculum development for Caribbean islands, and was generous in volunteering her services in the afternoons to teach agricultural science. Further to that, Candia designed the curriculum for the entire school program together with others on the team. Now, here is where we could go on with lists of people and you know the problem is when you begin to mention names uh, you run the risk of um, leaving out some and being accused <laughs> of not remembering others. So um, we had Mrs. Annard Charles um, and Mr. John, John Baptist which of course I've already mentioned. The search for a new principal was difficult and the board worked hard as they searched for a willing person. It was also leaving and a coordinator was also needed to take the place of Mrs. Finnegan. Finally, they had no choice but to persuade her sister, Mrs. Valentine Tong, to offer her services. She had attended the teacher's training college and had taught for 17 years and the ministry accepted her as a qualified substitute for principal. Mrs. Tong then took charge and moved the school from the technical wing to Savan Park to the spot that used to be called Fatima into the new building. But the story of that is an interesting one as well. Um, other principles, for instance, the one that is probably best and most popularly associated with the uh, school is Mrs. Celia Nicholas, a former uh, principal of the school. Thank you for that recognition, who taught also history, social studies, speech and drama. But amazingly, she served from the 1st of September 1981 to the 31st of December 2021. And if you work that out, it's just over 40 years of dedicated service. But it was not easy. What Mrs. Nicholas faced were serious challenges and situations that she had never expected or been warned about. Financial crisis situations, management, crisis situations and here she was in a kind of baptism by fire having to deal with these situations keeping the school afloat dealing with the various people in the ministry coping with all the mepui and movilang she was getting from behind her back to use the local palliance um, but she held her head high and continued on and you would not have believed that this was going on behind the scenes so um, all recognition which you have already given to her and what you all know as former students and the respect that she deserves is evident here tonight. There were other people uh, who contributed um, but also made a name for themselves outside such as Miss Valda Henry, a teaching principles of business, history, English, commerce and even physical education. And then we could go through all the names and latterly Deborah Joseph, uh, the, the principal. But I don't want to dwell too much on the names because I want to go ahead with the issues related to making sure that the school had a permanent home. All decisions pertaining to education of the students were always discussed. First with the parents at PTA meetings where questions could be placed directly to teachers and certain protocols were decided based on discussions to get the best solution. This approach was really the spirit of the Dominica Community High School. Even naming of the school came out of such a decision. In the beginning, there were many who suggested that the school should be named after the first founder and um, organizer. Um, but it was felt that really 
It had been born out of the community action and that the name should reflect this. So that is the way in which the name evolved. The community high school. Because paramount above all of this community action comes the way in which the school secured a spot in the Roseau Valley so as to enable the construction of its own building and agricultural farm. So many people whose names we probably can't mention because there's so many of them and we don't want to forget any were involved. There was much back and forth negotiations between parents government ministers and the relevant ministries submitting ideas and requests for use of any place to house the students besides the technical wing. Because what was happening is the Sixth Form College was growing and they required this space for that um, educational institution. Uh, which that actually became a government priority for increasing the number of Sixth Form students being enrolled. As luck would have it, during the 1970s, the government was involved in the large-scale land acquisition of Bath and Ems Hall estates, which for almost 100 years had been lime, the lime juice producing plantations operated by the former owners, L. Rose and Company. The land was required for housing involving slum clearance of central Roseau and the addition of homes for the growing number of people living in and around the capital city. Along the edges of this property, there were plots of vacant land still unutilized in the mid-1970s, and it was suggested that something could be found for the school along this zone. The state premier at the time, the Honorable Patrick Roland John, responded to this suggestion and asked the Housing and Planning Department to find a spot somewhere on the remaining land to place the school. So it was that they came up with the portion of land where the school is now located. It was an area known since long ago as Savan Park. It also got the name of Fatima because of a little shrine that was situated in a cave along the road when the road was very much narrower. And in those days, many people were walking um, from Loda, from Rosalie and coming down and the shrine was a place to pray as they ended or as they began their trip on foot across the island. It was lodged between the Roseau, that is the piece of land, was lodged between the Roseau River to the south and a barrier of high cliffs to the west and north. There had been rock falls in the past and during the major hurricane of 1916 many acres of lime trees on the site had been swept away. However, following that hurricane, the land had been made more secure by the construction of a large river wall higher up the valley, which still exists in the vicinity of the mechanics shops at the Copt Hall Junction. In spite of this, as soon as the location was declared, there was an outcry and numerous complaints were brought forward about the possibility of stones rolling down from the cliffs above. This was a fact, for large boulders were known to have rolled down onto the fields below, although they mostly remained close to the cliff base and did not roll out into the open fields. But in spite of this, the majority of parents were adamant about not using the site to locate their children. The board was faced with a serious challenge at the time when the need for a permanent home for the school was crucial. They were caught, almost literally, as the saying goes, between a rock and a hard place. As Mrs. Finnegan recalls uh, the situation, and I will quote her in what she written, I thought hard about it and began to ask for divine intervention and remembered that there had been a statue of the Virgin Mary in a cave as a shrine on the side of the narrow road just before the entrance to the piece of land. The scheduled parents meeting was to introduce the answer from the ministry which was to build our school on this piece of land and to be used for agricultural education. 
so that practical agriculture would be increased. Well, the fear of the storms rolling was real, especially during the hurricane season. I listened to all the arguments and agreed with most of the most that the solution looked grim, as nothing could stop the storms. I was asked to give my opinion, and then, in my mind, I just got a strong urge to talk about the Virgin Mary, whose image had been placed in the cave for prayer and pilgrimages. It had disappeared when the road was widened some years before. But I found myself saying that since so many intercessions had been done in the name of the Lord, surely the place must have some blessings. And probably the only answer left at this point was to trust that the Virgin Mary would intercede and stop the stones from rolling on our children and damaging our school." Unquote. 47 years later, she reflected that I have not heard anyone getting hurt by the falling stones. After that speech, the vote was taken and a large majority voted to accept. They accept the land as a permanent home for the school so that it could go forward. The board accepted the land on a 99-year lease from the government at $1 a year. It was decided to pay the full $99 one time so that the school would not be in default for the foreseeable future. <laughs> and so it stands today. Um, take away 48 years, not less than 48 years, and you'll find out how many years are left. But I'm sure that the uh, school has endured so well and is so established in people's minds there that nobody would dare dispute an extension of the lease. Uh, all the papers were lodged with the uh, physical planning department, but luckily by 2014 or thereabouts, the school was able to get a copy of the receipt because in Hurricane Maria, three years later, many documents were lost in the building over there in the housing and planning area. But despite these losses, the school is all proper and legal and every aspect of the program was approved by the legal process. I'm going to try to speed things up a bit. I told you that this story is long, um, and I'm not even telling all of it, but it's good to have it recorded. The project for the school building was written by Mrs. Finnecke and was sent to several foundations before the school got a visiting consultant from the Rockefeller Brothers Fund who had arrived in Dominica to sign conservation documents with government to help teach the principles of conservation to the youth of Dominica. He had just uh, a few short hours on the island and was not able to meet the prime minister who had gone off state, off island. Because he had only a few hours, they were able to meet with him and take him to see what was being done in the D. CHS project. He was impressed and asked that we may send a request for our greatest need. The need was obviously our own building and farm. And then a grant of $62,770 was approved. And later at a ceremony on the proposed school grounds, a check was delivered, photos were taken of the occasion, and the consultant who had accepted the application Mr. Bill Moody presented the check to Mrs. Miranda Prevo, who accepted it on behalf of the parents and the school. It was a great day indeed. The project was written to be able to secure the interest, and Mrs. Lynn Giro volunteered to do the architecture for the school free of charge, building in good time. Also, Mr. Egbert Charles of E.H. Charles Construction Company agreed to build a school, and with their cooperation, the board was able to send a request with the cost of the building and the architectural drawings. They both made this large contribution, and the board, under the director of the parent meeting, agreed to give Mr. Egbert Charles to build a school. The original document showing the budget reports that survived Hurricane David and Maria. 
both of which caused much damage to the school's written records. And this is also difficult when you're trying to retell the history of the school because so much of these records have been destroyed. There's talk also of the cooperative bookshop as registered as a cooperative business. What was done 78 years ago can be repeated in a faster and more welcoming environment now that we have high-speed internet to make our tasks and communication more efficient. But nothing beats face-to-face -face contact and networking, which made so much of the community high school possible. Where there is a will, there is a way, as they say. And it's hoped that Mona's wakening of the alumni, that's Mona St. Louis' wakening of the alumni, brings back the spirit of those who have gone before, and that many more such as Mr. F.L.A. Charles, the agricultural banana expert, Sergeant Lendal Valmond, uh, Mr. Elicia, the contractor who was responsible for building the fence around the school, Mrs. M. Loblack, leader in the Social League Social Center, Mrs. Mona Piper, arts and crafts expert at Bellows Craft, Mrs. Etienne, Mrs. Boyd from Goodwill, Ms. Mrs. Etienne, who I've already mentioned, who helped with all the cooking and the successful bar sales, and who, some note, uh, made the best coconut cheese, who was a member of the fundraising committee. Mr. Galloway, printer at the Dominica Chronicle, who produced many of the flyers and notices that had to be sent out and so many more who put their best efforts to serve as board members and committee members and volunteer are beyond recall. As I end, we must note that the influence of the foundation of the community high school on other schools in the 1970s and overflowing into the 1980s and beyond was very significant. The example that had been given uh, helped to inspire such other schools as the St. Andrews High School at Londonderry, which was set up after Hurricane David had wrecked so many houses in Roseau where their children had to go to board to go to the schools in Roseau. There was a need then to set up a school in the north. And so this was done entirely with parental influence, support, and linkage to the Ministry of Education and the government as a whole. Places also like the Nehemiah School at Jimit and other church schools, as well as latterly the Orion School as a high school, in addition to the already established Pioneer Primary School, which was also set up by parents and well-wishers. And so the work continues. The, the teachers who now, as a government-assisted school, get paid, but the memory of that volunteerism, the memory of that commitment, the memory of the principals and the teachers who volunteered came on strong. I personally had to leave after less than a year because I entered politics and became a member of the House of Assembly. So that was it. But I did enjoy my time, and I always felt that there was a need to go beyond the classroom. And I remember taking hiring truck to go up to places like Freshwater Lake and Bury Lake and Titu Gorge and, you know, introduce uh, the pupils in the spot, in the field, to all the features of geography uh, and history in Dominica. And, of course, we see that even now, there has been a new building added uh, at the back, and that has its own story of seeking funding and getting assistance and putting things together. But I think that, in spite of all, the community high school has left an important mark about the way in which it was put together and the way in which it was run and the way in which it will survive with the commitment of the people who have benefited from the school, as well as the memory of those who gave so much of their time and effort to making it happen. Thank you very much. I'm going to call Doc. Maybe you need to get it, McCarthy. 
I was about to say Dr. Marie, um, Mark, to make his presentation because he was very instrumental in writing of the project that got funded to have the building at its site and prior to that. So, Mr. Marie, why is it that you were able to go to school at the Dominica Community High School when it started? That it is because of cricket. Yes. When they had the Widowed Islands cricket tournament, moved from one island to the other, and would come to Dominica every four years. And since we didn't have TV and so on, in order to allow the students and the whole community to go to the botanical gardens to watch cricket, the school hours were adjusted such that you started at 8 and you ended at 1, so we could all go to watch cricket in the afternoon in the gardens. Then, somewhere about the, um, in the middle 60s or thereabout, somebody at the St. Mary's Academy decided, well, but this seems to work pretty good. Why don't you just keep it like this? That's how school came to be. <laughs> eight to one, first and secondary schools, and then it spread out to um, primary schools. So basically, the secondary schools were not in use after one o'clock. So there was an opportunity for somebody else to be educated in the afternoon. Remember, it's cricket. Okay, the school, as Lennox was saying there, was he did a lot by Mrs. Finucane, who had been working in Africa in um, on the copper mining country, um, Gambia, right, I think. And she was back in Dominica, and she had the idea in her head that at the time that, which is still generally an idea that agriculture is an industry which had supported Dominica for a while. but. The people who engaged in agriculture were mostly persons who had not had a secondary education. So, as part of setting up the school, it was decided that agriculture should be a key subject in the school's curriculum. And I think, memory serves me correctly, it was the first school to have agriculture as a subject which students were required to take. Um, when she recruited me, it was somewhat under false pretense. She thought I was an agronomist, but I had actually not studied agronomy, I studied agricultural economics at the Faculty of Agriculture. But my parents were involved in farming, so I knew something about planting um, tomatoes and, uh, and cucumbers, etc. So, it wasn't difficult to, to teach it, especially since I had the textbooks. I could read them the week before the students and um, know out what the program was and we would do it. I think we did it successfully and I think I also taught the students something about the economics of agriculture. Because as part of the training in agriculture, we planted a number of crops like cucumbers or short-term crops up at the bridge just in Coptal there, which was subsequently turned into a, the, the, the garbage dump. Um, and we would go to the market on Saturdays to sell the crops. And the fa students had the good opportunity to realize that when we came with crops that everybody else had in abundance, we got a low price and we didn't sell all our crops. So they got a very good practical lesson in economics of farming, which um, might have dissuaded some people from becoming farmers <laughs> because they realized that uh, although you had might have something to sell, possibility of selling it profitably wasn't guaranteed. So, um, you know, you had to have a little bit more thought about what you planted, when you planted it, and who you expected to sell it to. 
Now we are in 2022 and the methods of production of everything has changed and we are now able to use computer technology and other modern tools in agriculture. For example, I would wish that um, the people who are using greenhouses would step up to the next level. In other words, to, to mechanize the greenhouse and control it by a computer. They are, I know of one in Guadalupe that operates like this. The entire um, temperature is controlled, the humidity, everything is controlled by a computer. So the greenhouse can open, it can close, and it can sprinkle, and you have um, a drip irrigation for fertilizer use. They use it primarily in um, the cultivation of flowers, particularly um, anthuriums. Anthuriums must grow on the shade, but if you grow them on the shade, on the trees, you are exposing them to insects, which are going to bite them and um, spoil the beauty of the, of the flower. So if you do them in a greenhouse and you control the temperature and the climate, microclimate within the greenhouse, you get excellent um, flowers which have no blemishes. And you get the best price on the market. Similar um, opportunities exist, of course, for different crops. You know, right, we recently, not, well, not so recently, but a couple of years now, have been planting um, what to say, Irish potatoes, although I should probably say Peruvian potatoes, that would be more historically correct, um, or white potatoes, in Dominica, which you buy in the supermarket. Sometimes you don't know this, the Irish potato is from Dominica, but we do have the climate in certain parts of the island that allows us to plant Irish potatoes in Dominica, but we plant them out in the in the sun, and I'm sure some of you here, or some of the people listening to me, who are scientifically minded, can probably develop a method to grow these potatoes on a larger scale over a longer period of time, so that we could eventually not need to import any Irish potatoes at all. So although we've done agriculture for quite a long while, we seem to have been falling back towards in terms of using the agricultural product, the raw product itself, to develop new products. Um, our banana industry has gone down the drain because we simply sold the bananas as a fruit which would be ripened in the United Kingdom for eating. But a gentleman here in Dominica had actually developed a process to produce an alcohol from bananas, which was not a liquor, it wasn't sweet. And a friend of mine who is a connoisseur of, of alcohol tells me that it was a suitable replacement for cognac, which is a rather high-priced alcohol. Unfortunately, we were not able to capitalize on that and we developed uh, 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 an industry based on bananas. Similarly, back to the banana um, thing, it's possible to use the stem of the bananas after you've cut the, the, the fruit off, to use the stem to make textiles to, for the manufacture of clothes, garments. It's been done in Uganda, and I think we could do it, or we could have done it, uh, when we had a large um, production of bananas. So our job and duty now with agriculture is to apply science and imagination to the production of these crops with the intention of innovating what we do with the, with the products. But one thing we should not do 
just get off a little track here, is process our products. Because eating processed foods is not very good for your health, whether it be juice or otherwise. Yes? So I, I hope you'll have some more some questions for me and uh, we can expand on what I've just um, thrown out to you. Okay? But he made a meaningful contribution and he did make mention of the greenhouses and we can see presently at least the Dominica Community High School has two functional greenhouses which should have been more than that but the two were taken away from us you know unceremoniously and they are trying their best with the greenhouse technology he also made mention of the drip irrigation which of course they sometimes do with the cucumbers and tomatoes. We are going to have Mr. Solomon Pascal, one of the early students of the Dominica Community High School. And like Mr. He has been in agriculture and like Ms. Dr. Honeychurch also in politics. So you can see quite a number of politicians are associated with the Dominica Community High School and we'll go into that into the present. I must begin by stating that I am a true replica of the Dominica Community High School. I got my foundation education from the Dominica Community High School where I was introduced to agricultural science, both practical and theory. And really, Mr. Do I'm sorry, my teacher, Mr. McCarthy, Mary, was one of my agricultural science teachers at the time. Also, Mr. Severin McKenzie. I must mentioned that based on the history given by Dr. Honeychurch, I think he, gave, he did a very um, great job by highlighting a number of the people who really put themselves forward using community volunteerism to really develop the, the, the whole concept of the community high school in which many of us sitting here today benefited from. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank, I mean, all the past teachers, all the past board members that Mr. Dr. Honeychurch mentioned, uh, the past principals, Mrs. Nicholas, whom I know did a, a fantastic job in moving the school forward, as well as um, Mrs. Tong, who was the first administrator of the, of the, of the high school. And uh, one of the leading persons at the back of the, the idea, the concept, Mrs. Finnegan, who was very, very passionate about education, children's learning, and the whole idea of ensuring that students would be able to improve the education by getting a space at a high school. And as was earlier highlighted, it was not that some of we, the students, did not have the ability to, to perform at high school levels, but it was because there was a lack of space available. And as a result, if these persons and the, 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 the board members did not work out this noble idea, 
most likely many of us probably would have lost the opportunity of attaining a secondary education. And I owe it to, I will reiterate, I owe it to all the past board members, the initiators, and all the volunteer teachers who have or who worked tirelessly in ensuring that we could be part of this secondary education in the early 70s. My role here this evening was, is to speak about an alumni and the importance of an alumni organization to any learning institution. And we all here understand and we know what an alumni body is. Basically, it's a, it's a group of past students and possibly faculty staff, as well as present students who come together to work with any institution to continue its development. And hence the reason why we all are here this evening. We are all alumni of the community high school. Past student, present student, faculty staff, and even extended supporters who have the thirst for education. So it is important that this group of people can come together and work collaboratively to improve the institution's standards in all ways that they could assist. We know that alumni organizations are help to raise funds and give donations to the, the I mean, attach institutions. That also is very critical in, in, in sustaining those institutions. So an alumni group is a very valuable financial, intellectual, and human resource organization. And what happens is that the we maintain the reputation or the educational reputation of that particular institution. The alumni group can be very broad in scope because what we will find is that there is a diversity of a diversity of talents and skills and knowledge, knowledge base. And when all this is harnessed together, you have a wealth of resources available to support the particular institution. So an institution grows well. It grows very, very well when it continues to produce successful people. The graduates continuously, they develop intelligence, they're innovative, and they are normally effective in their fields. And that is very, very critical because you have an alumni group with that broad level of resources and the institution can benefit quite a bit. And I'll give a little example. You may have persons who are skilled in a number of areas and the institution could require support in those particular areas. So those persons could volunteer their services to the institution to continuously upgrade some of the areas that the particular institution is limited in. 
So you could have areas, I could mention a few areas that persons who are trained in different fields can return to, to, to support their, 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 their institutions. You have areas like newer technology, better services, better um, facilities, and improved campuses such as buildings. I know alumni groups can raise the necessary funding for expansion of, of particular institutions if there is a need for more accommodation. Education transformation. Education is basically transformation. So when students attend any form of learning institution, that particular student must be transformed. And so that they can return into society to be able to contribute meaningfully to the development of that society. So any educational institution has the responsibility of transforming its learners to ensure that that individual can move back or move out in society to really make a fundamental or an important contribution to society. And I know the community high school has been doing that. Hence the reason why we have all these alumni members who are trained and qualified in a number of areas and can return to contribute to the continuation or the continuous development of that institution. It could be the skills and knowledge and then even among alumni members themselves, knowledge, the knowledge base can be shared. So a number of us are a trained in particular areas, we can share our knowledge, we can assist one another. I mean, in terms of networking, and that, that is also very important. It creates an avenue for each one to help one another. However, it is important for the institution itself to be strategic. And when I say that, I mean that they should be able to establish this means of communication, this level of communication and networking. And that should be open as much as possible. And in many cases or in many instances, to invite the alumina um, organization, even in the decision-making process. Because it is always stated where many heads um, put ideas together, you get better results, rather than one or a single entity just coming up with an idea and putting it into implementation. So that is critical for the, the institutions to be very strategic in their planning of their activities, their curriculum, and, and, and even their plan for the devo further development of the institution. So there's always need for this direct and open channels of communication in that regard. And we know communication goes both ways. It's not basically a one-way process. It go is a two-way process. So wherever the, however the, the alumni association would communicate to the institution, the institution also should have that openness to be able to communicate with the alumni association to, to be able to get a greater, greater um, support in terms of decision making and decision implementation. So 
an, an, an alumni group can be a very strong support to any educational institution. They could build the institution ambassadors. They could recruit or help the institution to recruit prospective students. They could mentor alumni associations to assist in the mentoring um, current students of the institution. They could provide assistance to students in career advancement and helping members to stay connected with each other. An efficient alumni association helps an institution to build its reputation. It can contribute to the academic matters, student support, mobilizing resources, both financial and non-financial, meaning human. So this is very, very critical because an education system of this century must be very creative and innovative. And as such, institution, the institution's curriculum must be designed to meet a focus on these attributes of education. I must say I have looked at the current curriculum which the Dominica Community High School offers and I'm very inspired, I'm very pleased by what is being taught at the Dominica Community High School. What this does, it provides the opportunity for the students to receive a holistic education so that when they get out into society, they will be able to be better citizens to contribute to the development of the country as well as the world at large. So we here as alumni, it's our responsibility to stay together, to network together, and at all times, see how we can assist as the others did for us, to enable us to have a secondary education. See how we can assist to move, I mean the school that we are basically more aligned to, which is the Dominica Community High School, to move it forward and to help it to become one of the premier secondary schools in Dominica. Thank you. We must not belittle the influence and the numbers of people who are attached to the Dominica Community High School or who benefited. In the time that I have been there, from 1981 to now, we have politicians. We have present politicians now. When I'm saying ministers of government, we have past ministers of government, okay? We have individuals in the legal field, lots of lawyers. I'm not going to call their name, you need to find out. We have religious ministers, <laughs> okay? We have people in the nursing profession. We have people not, I don't, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I know we have a vet, and I'm just talking of individuals in Dom Nico. I'm not talking about the diaspora yet. Okay? We have teachers, the person who people think who creates the Maverick at the St. Martin School, Mrs. Ms. Bonnie, a student of the Dominica Community High School. And I can go on. In the financial institution, we have individuals there. So I'm just telling you that the knowledge that I know of that school raising a million dollars through its alumni in less than 24 hours, it can be done in Dominica.
if we are committed to the school and it doesn't take much it doesn't take much I remember almost every year I go off to holidays etc and those of you who don't know you go to places like Staples etc etc and you get free pencils free rulers free erasers free whatever so when I go wherever I go my to my family I say hey six of us going today okay because they won't give me all what I want so you take all and that is how I used to get stationery for the Dominica Community High School. So the, by the time I'm coming down, I have a little barrel with pencils, pencils, etc., etc. And the students know how they had to buy them from me. Okay? <laughs> At the end of the month, they could get prizes. But anybody want a pen, a pencil, or whatever, especially CXC pencils, you pay for it. And you raise funds. And I'm saying that to say, and when I see them, if each student who went to school in the Commonwealth of Dominica does that little act, it doesn't have to come from the money, and send it to his or her school, the principals of those schools would not have to be spending important time in fundraising. And that would go to the classroom where the teacher principal has been trained to deal of progress in the classroom, not in fundraising. Our people, our principals and our teachers in Dominica, we have to do too much fundraising to keep the schools afloat. And I'm talking about government as well as non-government. The government schools, you see, which are operating top-notch, is because they do a lot of fundraising. And I'm expecting all our students here, we have a lot in the diaspora, to pass the word around that Mr. Solomon, he made a very good point, and I'm happy you were asked to speak about the role of the alumni in the development of the school. If each student who, you don't have to wait for the principal, you don't have to wait for the teacher. The principal doesn't have to know you, the teacher doesn't have to know you. You make your contribution to the school which nurtured you. And now we are going to Mr. Fenric Pinard, a student at the Dominica Community High School, and now a teacher at the school, and he's going to make his presentation to you. To, I'm always happy to be in the company of the past students of the Dominica Community High School and the well-wishers and the founders when I should start with the founders. I remember when I um, graduated um, in 1991 and um, Mrs. Nicholas, I, I was head boy, so I had to give the vote of thanks and I remember she said, she told me to include in my um, vote of fans so or in my, my speech, um, the initiators of the DCHS experience, I never forget that. And I remember having to men make mention of Mrs. Finnegan. And I remember when we had the, the, the opening of this whole um, alumni, I hope I pronounce it properly. <laughs> All right, um, I was very moved by what Mrs. Finnegan was presented via the social media, you know, and I, I want to say thank you very much for people like, to people like Mrs. Finnegan for initiating, and of course those other individuals who worked with her and others who came after. Dr. Honeychurch gave a, a list there, and I am like, wow, some of these people I never knew they were part of the community high school. And that is why I remember Mrs. Nicholas always telling us, try to be your best in terms of your discipline, your, your disposition, your demeanor, all right, your, your mannerisms, she always tells us, be your best when, no, when you think no one is looking at you. Some people, they are only performer, they perform at their best when somebody is monitoring them, somebody is doing some level of evaluation of them. All right? Got Mr. Thomas there. I saw Mr. Thomas coming in and I was wondering, but well, Mr. Thomas is going to give a speech tonight to us, you know, sir. I did not know that Mr. Thomas... Mr. Thomas 
was, was I, I, I parked close to Mr. Thomas's office at Kings Hill. You understand? And it goes back to what I'm say, I, I just said. I would see Mr. Thomas, I would say, good day, sir. You understand? So when I'm going to Mr. Payne's home, it's close to his business, his office, I would see him, and I, if I, I say, good day, sir, I would see other individuals, I heard some of the names, and I say, I meet these people, and I say, good day, sir. Hello, sir. You understand? So that I am very happy that I was able to offer some level of, of respect to individuals to whom I really have to give the respect. You understand? So that it is very important that we be at our best when nobody is really expecting it or is evaluating us. Okay, so thank you very much to all those who, you know, contributed to what the Dominica Community High School is and will be in the future. Okay, so that I remember a friend of mine to, um, used to always ask me when I used to go to school, so you're going in the bush, boy? You're going up in the bush? Yeah. I tell him, yes, I'm going to the bush. You know? So people had a type of, you know, negative, uh, that bush, bush, many people are, are, are crying out for bush now, you know. Because the bush is very important for the preservation of, of uh, and you know the whole climatic, I you know, regulation and so. So bush is important. But his, his, his questioning me about the bush was a kind of, uh, try to be sarcastic and making fun of me. But I am very proud of the bush, if I may use that. I'm very proud. You know? And um, I am proud of all those who I, I, I knew as students of the community high school when I, I came in, you know, I, I felt a little alienated because, boy, there was a type of a, I saw fellows with beard, big men, you know, big guys, and I never climbed that step when I was in first form, I never climbed that step. And there was no one telling me that I could not climb this step. The way these guys presented themselves, is like, hey, you are not prepared, you are not ready to climb that step yet. So you just to be down there looking at them, you know, looking at them, these big guys. I play cricket, I used to play cricket where? But after that, that was it. You play cricket, I would debate. I would still beat them at the debate. And at the end of the exercise, that's it. You're down there again. I cannot, I have to wait to go to second form and then third form and so on and so on. And so I sometimes tell the students that try to, you know, when you reach, I'm not saying to look down on the other, but give them that level and let them see that you are a senior and behave as a senior and so that they could emulate you and they could carry it on. So we want to at least respect each other in their seniority and so on. All right, so that the, the recently a lady was, was, was talking to me and she said, boy, you know, and she's not the only one saying that, many people are, uh, they are wishful that they had sent their, their students to the Dominica Community High School, All right? So she was saying, boy, that is why I wanted to send my son, you know, and I sure if he had gone to the community high school, he would be a more disciplined boy. No pa bosta men for. We not bosta. Community high school students, we not bosta, you know. But we're strong. You understand? Our influence is strong. You understand? When people come across a community high school student, when they are told after this a community high school student, they say yes. Because there is something about the Dominica Community High School. We stand for seriousness and discipline. You understand? Again, over the years, you will understand, you know, things, you know. But we still maintain that level of discipline. Do you know that the students, you know, the principal, well, the former principal, immediate former principal, Mrs. Nicholas, you know, for safety, you know, because the road users, my boy, whoo, that's where they do their overtaking, because the only place they can do the overtaking, because Corners all before you had um, Silver Lake and so So then they take advantage of that stretch there. It's, it can be risky. And so Mrs. Nicholas ensured that they, 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 they line up, you know, inside and they go out in a safe manner. Some of them have their little issues, some people, parents and so the bus drivers, they get fed up, but it is for a good reason. And you know, in the apps, they get so used to it that they still come and ask, Miss or Sir, we can go there? It's in them. It's in them. The school is safe. You understand? Some people are happy that their students are at the school because they have that nice fencing. No talk for the 
nice, clean, green. We are, we are the green school, you understand? So that they are there and they are safe, and the parents feel that they do not have to worry so much of perhaps, you know. Is he at school or perhaps? I'm not saying that this happening daily in other schools. I'm not trying to, you know. But then the truth is, up there is safe. You are in defense, not that you in jail, but you are in defense and you feel safe. And we look out for each other. The students look out for each other. I am doing my promotion here. Okay? The students look out for each other very well. There is no sort of bully, bullying or, or students trying to, to bring down each other. I've seen students come to school and I'm like, oh boy, I hope this student, stop, sorry, this student is treated with some level of respect because you might see a little disability here and there, be it in speech or it, um, I, I, if I may make mention of, there's one Eugene, mm -hmm. right, from Soufriere, he's at the, he's hospital. At the hospital. Mm -hmm. And when he came and he left and he was, there was no one, I mean, you see somebody trying to help him you know, along the way, you, you, rather than trying to make fun of him. And so, so the school is a school where we have a type of, you know, togetherness and integration. And, and, and this, this I, I am very proud to, 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 to talk about. The school is a school of inclusion and we do not um, alienate anybody. And you work nicely, you do your agriculture. And then if I may go into what Mrs. Nicholas spoke about earlier, again, coming with Nupa, Nupa and Busta Menu 4, you know, we're not boastful, but we're strong. So we, we have the members of parliament to include ministers. We have, I mean, CEOs and country managers of, of banks and credit unions. We have lawyers, we have nurses, oh, complex politicians, um, policemen, discipline. I was looking at a matter thing then I not that I'm happy that somebody got arrested, but then I saw an arresting officer, Jonah Oman, and I was like, okay, yeah. wow. <laughs> okay, community high school past student doing his, his, his carrying on his duty. So that um we have um head of um Aika in St. Lucia, we have um teachers like myself, I'm happy to be back teaching from um, 1993, I remember when I had to go there, same Mrs. Nicola, she had a bank job and she had a teaching job and she asked me, what notes you taking there now? I say, well, I said, what, what do you want to go in the bank now? She said, uh -uh, you come in here. I said, why are you telling me about the bank job? You know? So, but I couldn't get the bank job if I did not say, is she that? <laughs> so I say, before I have to lose all for all, boy. And I've never, never regretted um, going back to the school. And working at the school and while I am there develop myself educationally with the support of the other members of staff and um, the principal today I am also proud that mrs. mrs. Deborah Joseph who taught taught me integrated science at the when I was just about to leave she came in and so today she is my principal very serious small short but serious well organized person so the school has a high level of organization and leadership all right and the school is providing the students with you know the modern stuff you know there's always room to bring in new stuff you know new programs new subjects not really new subjects as far as their existence but in terms of the introduction or their reintroduction but um the school is 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 doing its best to prepare students and to mold them and to work with them at their levels and for them to be, as we said, self-reliant because we also have entrepreneurs, all right, the young guys in the little business and the ladies, all right, so that um, let us give our support to our school and let us be proud. I am very proud to speak about my school, all right, and so let us all do that and let us work together to, for the further development and success of the school. People are now saying that they wish they had sent their children to community high school. I'll give you one instance. A lady, she had two children at community high school. One did very well, one was doing very well. But he wanted to do the separate sciences, okay? Because we know we just do integrated science. And then she told me, Mr. Um, Cuthbert Elwin was the principal of the SME at the time, so I approached him and the child got his transfer. <coughs> And when he left SME, she approached, she came to me, she said, Mrs. Nicholas, I want to have a discussion with you. She said, you see that decision that I took 
to transfer so and so from the school. I regretted I did it. She told me so. So she explained to me why. And then I said, well, don't only tell me. I need you to tell me the individual staff members and tell them so. Many people, when the children, Miss Joseph is going through it now, I had to sit at that school sometimes my whole holidays for individuals to come to register. Because as I say, their neighbor was born maybe on a particular school. It's their right to see. Unless they get a no, they will not register. Now, I have some very good stories where individual students came in. They didn't get a scholarship. They didn't get a bursary. According to the parents, we did very well with them. And Manicolas, you did very well with them, so you'll get the scholarship and you'll get the bursary. And they did well. During the time that I've been there, we have for sure four individuals who have gotten their doctorate, four. I was very happy that I was able to attend one, Dr. Ian James. Okay, he was on the line with me just before I came here. I was supposed to go to Dr. Corner's own, Wilbert Corner, but COVID and the situation, and then the two others. Okay, so these are four individuals whom I admitted into Dominica Community High School and who now have their doctorate. Fallas for those who went before 1981. All right? And we spoke about private enterprising. We have this gentleman here who just walked in. Stand up, Sue. Stand up, you just walked in, you know who he is. He was a policeman, and he left it, and right now he's into farming full time. Even giving my school competition when come to chicken. Because customers we have, when we go to them, oh, we, we get from him already. Okay, you can sit down now, police officer. And you notice he still has the police officer stands with him, okay? We have teachers who are teaching out of Dominica. We have one right here, stand up miss. She's teaching in Antigua at Otter School. Her principal is my very good friend, you know? So we have gone across, we have our videographer here. We have another videographer here. All of them, when, when Miss Greenaway was before my time, right? But Mr. around the same time, right? But Mr. Albert with me. So we have our aggregate people working with geese industry. Mr. Sabroch at the back. Stand up, Mr. Sabroch. When geese was closing down in Dominica, Mr. Sabroch made sure that most of the items that geese had to give away came to the Dominica Community High School. When we were doing the extension, which we talk about now, he was the one who got a container for me so that we could, you know, preserve the things in the container. So we have a lot of people who have done well and have done well. The others, don't, you will get your little mention, don't worry, okay? I'm just doing it piece by piece. So right now, we are going to call on Miss Caprice. And Ms. Capri's family has a long history with the Dominica Community High School. Her uncle, Mr. Coppell, who would be here with us tonight, is in the States, right? And he has been with, remember I mentioned of his brother trying to start that, and he's continuing now, and he had to take a holiday. Mr. Coppell has worked himself to a thrasher, and he needs the holiday, he needs it, okay? And he needs it, he has to, and even he's over there, but still, last night he called me, just before I came, and that sort of thing. So I hope physically, but I don't know if mentally he's getting a holiday. So Miss Caprice, a present student, a student with a lot of potential, dancing, leadership, her parents are at the back, Rose and Daddy, they are at the back. So she's going to give you her experience at the Dominica Community High School. As you all heard, my name is Ms. Vijaya Caprice. 
I am currently now going to fifth form. And uh, well, Mr. Pena took mostly everything I wanted to see. <laughs> but I'm going to give it to you all in my way. From the time I entered Dominical Community High School, I was a bit shy. I doesn't really open up to people as much as I would do to my friends. But in meeting people in this little school, it gave a comfort which made me come up from my shell. It made me understand how to cope with people, how to understand people, how to deal with my own matters. Our oh, little school in the bush. It may be small, it may not have plenty of people, but our school has this togetherness, a uh, unity. For us, fourth and fifth, if any one of the first, second, or third need help, they would come up straight to us to get us to advice. If they have problem in work, coming up to us to get us advice. In in speaking, during our breaks, we have the big yard and mango trees. <laughs> and when our former principal was with us, oof. The students is the climb of the mango tree. And one of us has to keep a little lookout. Because as soon as you hear Majo Ben in the corner, you have to hide. And before they cut it down, because we always stream in on mango tree, find a little place in the corner, making sure one eye bear in the big stone, one eye in the bush. Or do she go? Not yet, wait still. As soon as she see the bush moving, somebody has to run. <laughs> and those that stay in the bush, water getting them. <laughs> Our experience with Mrs. Nicholas was very fun. In subject wise, agriculture, it is one, one amazing topic I can see. I love dealing with animals and the fact that I went to St. Luke's Primary School and we also did agricultural science and I was happy, I was glad. I myself wanted to go to Dominical Community High School because I love dealing with animals and playing in dirt. And in school, when we get to go to do work in the greenhouse, it would be fun because Melona is the strongest one, so I take in the pickaxe. And we would have, instead of just staying in class whole day, our teacher would allow us to go outside, not just to clean or to weed, but he would allow us to cut open the plants find out the different things in the plants, get to do our research about the plants. And it would be fun because everybody wants to compete against each other. But the competition was the thing that held us close. When our new building arrived, everybody wanted to see what was in it. But we had to be patient. Upstairs is our auditorium, downstairs is the, co the computer lab. I got to see it first as I was one of the speakers in the opening. I was extremely happy because we no longer have to stand up on the court for assembly, so we can go in the auditorium. And in the computer lab, we no longer have to always be inside the classroom waiting to share a charging port. We can go in the lab, we can sit down together, teacher teaching, we're getting our work done on the laptop. Overall, our school is more like a home. And that is what keeps us together. And I thank you for all being here.
I thank myself for being here to present, although I am still shaking. But thank you. She's not telling you too that when they went on the they used to eat the carrots too. So one day, one day we planted carrots. So I'm coming in, I'm saying, but Mr. Payne, something wrong with those carrots. At the, when they were so healthy and green and everything, and all of a sudden the carrots are, something is wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with the carrots. So I don't know if he was in couple with them. And then I said, mm -mm, I have to go and check those carrots myself. So I bend in down and strength I, I almost fall down. You know what the children were doing? Eating the carrots and putting the stuff down in the food. So many times when I go to the health center, I remember the, the health people used to tell me, especially the dental unit, Mrs. Jo Ms. Joseph, she just died. And she tell me, you know, I don't see community high school children coming to the dental unit, you know, on rare occasions. I said, naturally, they wouldn't come because they're eating guava, they're eating everything. I take my fastest, I say, let us plant cherries and um, coconuts. So when the tourists pass, you know, we can sell a little what? I never see cherries, I never see coconut. Once I drank a coconut water hog, I was making my rounds, and then all of a sudden, hey, uh, Miss, for you we were bringing it, for you we were bringing it. Because I caught them with the coconut. That is the only time I can say I drank a coconut from the coconut trees that were planted. But it is the fun of it all, you know? And at least sometimes they grudgingly do the work, but after a while they do it because what has been happening now for the practicals, they have been getting marks assigned to them. And if they're on the border, they will either fail or pass, just to tell them that attitude is so very important. So at least they see the value of it. And, all the, and as somebody, Mr. McMurray rightly said, at the time that Agriculture was introduced at the school. It was the only it was the only school doing agriculture at the time. So right now you have to pass agricultural science for you to be graded. So it's not only English, but you have to pass agricultural science. So even if the student has a good grade in English and maths and agri field, you get a UNS. So then they know. And Community High School is one of the years schools that carried agriculture for the Commonwealth of Dominica. And we have always had, Mr. Payne is not there, we have always had 100%, no less than 90% in agricultural science. Community High School has carried agricultural science for the Commonwealth of Dominica. Okay? So we have heard from all our panelists. Now it's your time. I saw you were refreshed. They don't give us anything, only water they give us. Okay, and some people eat biscuits, so you are well packed. So we hope you are packed with your questions and your comments, your experience. Just say anything. So if you're going to ask a question from a particular panelist, please address the panelists who would like you to come to the front because it is being taped. So you say your name, maybe you can say the year if you remember the year that you left school and then you make your contribution, you ask your questions, whatever. So let's get the ball rolling. My name is Reginald Lander. I, I attended the community high school between 1974 and 1979. Okay, Mr. Pinard, you talked about the bush, but can you imagine what we used to get going from one to five from the government school students? They would tell us, go get your own school. Your school not good. When they used to have sports, 
there will be still more classes. So can you imagine what we had to go through? Students after one, two years would get transferred to other schools because they couldn't tolerate what we were going through. Imagine you would see a teacher for one, one semester because that teacher had to go and study. And we had a lot of part-time teachers, so we had to really work hard and unite. Another thing I remembered that Honorable H.L. Christian one day came to address us and he said, you all are guinea pigs. And the children felt upset. But we all know guinea pigs are being used in experiments. And here is the experiment. Here is the result of the experiment. So although we felt offended, but what he was saying at the time, we couldn't understand. And today, I can see what Mr. H.L. Christian was saying. He had a vision, because at that time, there was only four secondary schools on the island. And there was no space for us in other schools. So tonight, I want to thank all the teachers who sacrificed part-time and otherwise to spend time with us because when no one else would work with us, they worked with us and here we are today. Thank you. My name is Alicia Defoe at that time, Leon Mid. And I attended DCHS around 78 and I think early 79 and migrated to St. Croix. But I remember going to Sherry and Space of Dominica County High School. But even with the experience of what you said, where whether we were looked as, as guinea pigs, there was a certain pride about us. And Miss Long at that time, Tong at that time, there was, she held a, a certain prestige that we emulated. And so, even if we shared um, when DCHS, um, sorry, when grammar school was leaving and we were walking in with our uniform, I remember that, that pride I felt competing with, D, with Dominica Grammar School. And I knew one day that we, DCHS, was going to be up there. I, when I think of DCHS, there's a quote that comes to me very often, from humble beginnings comes great things. And I have seen it, I've met a lot of DCHS students, past students that maybe just step in stone for them like me, just put my foot, get my foot wet. But we have excelled and there's a tenacity of, or audacity of competing with anyone else because of that beginning. I'm Jillian Larock. Um, went to school 1985 to 1990 and was also the head girl of Community High School. And um, when I went to Community High School, um, the granddaughter of Hayden, Hayden Thomas, so I was always had my personal ride every, every day, in the morning and in the afternoon too. So I used to tell him, I used to do a little lie, white lie, because I wanted to be like the other students, the walking home, I wanted to enjoy that moment to them. So I used to say, Daddy, I have afternoon class. I don't have no afternoon class. I just wanted to walk home with them. And it was fun, because it made me, it's a, a new environment, you meet friends, you meet people, and you're walking home with them, and you're laughing with them while you're going home. And when you reach Buffalo, you say, oh, I can't reach Pottersville just now. We, I wish it wasn't. No, it was just fun time and enjoying. And when, um, one of, who said about, about um, cleaning the benches and a riverside? Yes, sir. that was fun. So, community has let me experience 
things I wasn't doing at my home. I wasn't, I was the princess at my home. So come just let me know how to do agriculture, which I didn't want to do it in my hands at all. And when Matthew see me, he say, hello, I know your grandfather, but you have to clean. <laughs> and I didn't like it, but it, it make you get, it make you have fun because you're doing things that you're never accustomed of doing and you're walking home. Oh, and you said about eating carrot, you forget about eating cabbage. That was fun. Yeah, I was I, I, part of the guys who were eating cabbage and putting it back in the, in the soil and tomato too. So we did a lot of quite crazy things in community high school. But overall, it was nice. It was really nice and meeting new people and you knowing people. So I'm happy to really come to community high school. I am Mrs. Nadia Charles Joseph, daughter of FNA Charles, one of the founders of the school if you want to put it that way. Tonight I learned about, a lot about my dad's involvement in the school. That is something I didn't know. Because when I was told that I was going to be going to community high school, I was like, I want to go to grammar school. I don't want to go to that school. And he was like, well, at my age right now, I don't have time to go to all schools and register you and wait for who will take you. I'm just going to give Mrs. Nicholas a call and that's where you're going. And I was like, okay. But today, I'm very happy that I am, I, am, I am actual a product of Community High School. Very happy. Because one of, the, of the, the most important things to me about my school was when I was ready to write CXC, I wasn't sure what I want to become. But the school was doing nine subjects at the time when I was there, 93. And I did all the nine subjects up to fifth form. And then when you reach fifth form, you have to choose. And so I went home and I said, Daddy, I'm going to do eight subjects. And he said, you, eight subjects? You can manage eight subjects. How are you going to do that? I'm like, so Daddy, don't trust me then. Anyway, he gave me the money for my eight subjects. And I dropped French. French was the subject I dropped. But I did everything else. But I am still able to ask for my food and my water in French. I can still say my name, so I wouldn't die hungry if I go to Matnik or Guadeloupe. But most importantly, after I left school, I became a teacher. As soon as I left school, I became a teacher. Because I was able to do all the subjects. So I was like, you know what, I don't know what I want to be, so I'll become a everything. A teacher. Teachers do everything. They are everything. And today, it's been 27 years since I'm teaching. Yeah, it's, it's a very long time. I studied with Mr. Pascal at the Grand for Primary School, teaching agriculture for seven years. And Mr. Pascal, I think you can confirm that. After the seven years, when I left to go to teacher's college, we got an award from the government for agriculture, right? Right. And so, agriculture is something that I have been really enjoying. I love it. I never regret going to community high school for that purpose. And I'm still a teacher today. I teach literacy and HFLE at a, a secondary school in Antigua. And, but I can teach every and anything because of, yes, again, community high school. So I would like to really thank, you know, all those who came together to make that school possible. When we go to community high school, we can become anything we want to be because we have something that leads to anywhere we want to go. Yeah. So once again, I, I really would like to say thank you to the teachers who are here right now doing the job, teaching our students in Dominica, and all the, the other people again, as I said, who came together and make this school possible. Once again, thank you. Well, John Felix Thomas, that's the name. I just want Mr. Mary to come close to me. You know, because he's the real old head I can remember at the school. That's Mr. Murray. You see, somebody planted and others had to water. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Sometimes you see a person who planted water, but uh, <laughs> both of them must happen. <laughs> You know, and um, I just want both of us jointly, you know, to shower a sort of praise on 
All the lost call Majo. You heard her on the radio some time back, Majo? You heard Majo on the radio? Huh? You heard on the radio program? No, no, no. I didn't Remember when you were on the radio? Yes. Well, come close on up, please. Okay, okay. You can join us, all right? All right. Because right, right, 40 right. years, you said, she is the oldest of the oldest head, or the longest of the oldest head. And frankly, like myself, well, I can speak for myself, and I wish you would say the same thing, though I don't want to speak for him. Right. I'm saying this in a different <laughs> language. Do you really believe that the community high school would be where it is? is now at present when we first started off well i would say yes matter of fact i expected it to be much larger than it is now but um, i'm going to say a little something there that i i see a, a dark cloud over the school because the student body have been made to understand is about 70 persons now students and I saw a computer render of a new Dominica Grammar School that's going to be constructed more or less on the same spot which it is now, where they have a 700 students in a building already. It would seem to me as if when that institution is expanded or is constructed as it might be, that there will be so many places available that it's likely that one or two of the secondary schools around the Rozo might have to be folded so that the other, this new big grand um, building will have sufficient students. Um, I hope that doesn't happen. Because let, let's, let me put it this way, I hope the computer render I saw was an exaggeration that they aren't planning to have a thousand plus students in that building. Because if they do, it would seem to me the government might move to cease assisting the community high school because it says, well, we'll have this big space and it has all this space. Why should we have another school? pretty close by doing the same thing. But I hope and I trust that the computer render was just an exaggeration. Yeah. So we would have to rally persons like Mrs. Celia Nicholas, and of course, you the students, the past students, and all those who have played a part to ensure that that school continues because she said something, Mrs. Nicholas said something about the politicians. <laughs> so I heard Mr. Landers said something also about a and politician. He's a politician too. <laughs> so we'll come to that. Hmm. About Mr. H.L. Christian. But there is one thing else maybe you did not know that Mr. H.L. Christian was the first, he was Minister of Education at the time. And he was the first minister who visited the school, who invited him to the school. And from then on, you know, government started playing a more active role in the school. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. whilst he said guinea pig, maybe the meaning of guinea pig, you're an experiment, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I believe that his visit really changed the course. In terms of agriculture, I like what Mr. Mary said, that he's an agricultural economist, mm -hmm. not really an agriculturist. But an 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 oh, and not an agronomist, but he was involved in planting. And that's what makes, you know, the difference. Because it is true and very factual that agriculture became, you know, for example, the main pass parcel, a whole of the community high school. It was not easy putting a program on agricultural program together because I don't know how the board saw it at the time differently from I did. And um, it was young Thomas, a lady who just spoke earlier on, nobody wants to get their hands soiled. <laughs> you understand me? Isn't that true? Agriculture is, is not a tasty thing. And the concept that I brought out to the school was we have to teach ag agriculture, teach the children to appreciate, to develop an appreciation for agriculture because 
that kind of hard back breaking thing you are not going to get students to really you know conform themselves to that but the community high school proved to be exceptional and what really made it I want to give some praise to the principals, I think Ms. Tong, and also Ms. Celia, who never allowed agriculture to die at this school. And I, I want to praise you all for it. Because it's not something that was really highly appreciated. The other aspect is funding for the school. And, and I heard somebody mention, I think it's mentioned, a million dollars can be raised in a day if everybody played that part. But fundraising for the school was not easy. And school fees, I don't think anybody mentioned it. The community high school had the highest school fee because it was not subsidized at the time. And maybe $25 when maybe at the other schools was just about $5. And $25 was big man dollars. You know, the word community, it was not a settled community or, or, or community as a whole because people came from Marigot, you know, it was more or less a school we can say if we use the word balkanized, children coming from all over the country. But today when I hear the, the students speak and she said how they have been able to gel themselves as a subtle community, I mean that speaks volume and again I want to give credit. To, 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 to Sister Nicholas there. And that's why I, I could not hesitate but call and congratulate her on the radio. You know, because 40 years, and to put it that way, she take baby. <laughs> it is true, it's a fact. You know, people never like you because the stance you have to take is not what they want to hear. And you cannot tell people what they want to hear. You need to tell them what they need to hear. So it had not been an easy task. But of great importance, I think it's a Mona, Saint Mona, Louis. Saint Ville, Saint Louis, Saint Louis. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I want to compliment and, and congratulate you and your entire body because it, ma it makes me feel good. The, it makes the, me as feel the good. executive to stand up. The executive, you know, the executive, yeah. The executive stand up so you all can be seen. Beautiful and and and. You all must be the vanguard of the school. So when, when Mr. Maris said about the dark light that he said, the grammar school had been there, the convent had been there, the SMA had been there, even the PSS had been there, but that did not prevent the community high school from producing the class students that it had produced. It's not the quality of a building, but it's the quality of the children who attend that building and I believe you had a body of, of, of students who were willing to bend, who were willing to make sacrifices and these are the students who want coming to the school. It's not numbers but quality and from what I heard how many doctors out there, how many teachers out there, once you can promote, once you can keep on promoting the successes of that school, have no fear. Behind every dark cloud, I'm glad you said dark cloud, but behind every dark cloud, there's what? Silver lining. A silver lining. And you all are to be that silver lining. Now, a little bit, I, I heard Mr. Holy Church mentioned about the funding of the school. I remember Ms. Jean Fidokin, a very brilliant lady, very, very brilliant lady, and I wish she could have been here with us tonight. She approached me at some time and she said, Mr. Thomas, how can you help us at the community high school? So the first thing I said to her about community high school, I haven't heard of that. She said, yes, it was at the SMA and they're moving. So I said, but what are they teaching these students? She handed me a little book and mark you, I'm very much black conscious. When I look, some black picture, there were some names like Baby, I don't know if you remember Baby and Cecilia Green. You know, some of the black movement people, uh, not that I am anti-black because I am black conscious, but I don't want to give a black education to children that's not going to help them, you know, to be able to be competitive in the world and in the field that they're going in. So I said to Jane, while I, I, I want to contribute, 
but I want to know what is going to be the end result. So we need to change course, we need to change direction. She agreed to that. I said, okay, that's where I brought in Mr. Um, Dairample. And after some time, sat but through the same way I brought him in, I got a scholarship to send one of my members of my organization to Cody International Institute. So I said, Mr. Dairample, I'm sorry, I have to take you from the school. Your boys made bring you, so I have to take you back. And I had to send him off to Canada. He said, but how are you going to send me off to Canada? I said, I'm going to send you off to Canada. The school needs me. I said, but we're going to need you to, and you can come back and serve the school even better. But to make a long story short, the school represents, it represents success. And the stories that you are given there, that is what that will carry the school forward. I want to ask Miss, Miss um, Joseph, Deborah, you're from my community, all right? I don't want to ask you to take a page from Miss Nicholas's, take the whole damn book. <laughs> you understand? Just take the book because you're going to come under pressure. You're going to come under pressure because you're going to get a new set of students. You know when students start to praise you? All those students here praising Miss Nicholas and Majo now. You think they give a hell? They give a hell. <laughs> you understand me? Isn't that true, Mr. Landa? Fine. But now you can see the worth of our work. And that's what's going to carry you forward. You were saying something. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I just wanted to say that although we are happy that you, the students succeeded and so on, I think we shouldn't forget the parents, the parents who decided that you had to have an education. And if it was not available in what you might call the normal schools, that they were going to make their own school to get you educated. And I, I think we should remember that it's the determination of your parents to have a school that really caused the, the school to happen. Because at your age, at the time, you were not in a position to form your own school. You know, and it's your parents who had the determination and understood that Although at the time, when you took the 12 plus exam, there was a thing called they passed and they failed. But in point of fact, you are not failed. There simply wasn't enough space to accept you. So if they could create a space, then you could go to school. And as I said, because of cricket, there were empty classrooms in the afternoons. All you needed was to organize some teachers who would be willing to come to school in the afternoon. And the expression, I think, about you being big guinea pigs might have been a reference to the fact that everybody else went to school in the morning, and here you have a group of people who went to school in the afternoon. It was a bit of an oddity at the time, or even, or even up till now, actually, you know? Yeah. And now, I'm going to give you all a challenge. As I said, how many of you all would send your children to the community um, high school? Or how many of you all have sent your children to the, to your children to the community high school? Let me see the hands. Okay, fine. So if the school has been good for you, you must be the leading example in ensuring that you yourselves don't develop a prejudice against the community high school. You must send your children to the community high school. Now, as he mentioned about Mr. Mr. Moody, I think you, you were very instrumental in terms of planning up the school program. I'm going to give you all a little joke in funding for the school because fundraising, and Majo said that a lot on the radio, is not an easy thing. And funds are very hard to come by. I remember in the days, I was responsible for paying the teachers at the time. Now, Mark, let me say straight, I have never collected one dime as payment from the school. I worked for the school fully gratis because I had my level of independence. But when you see month end, there's not much you have to give them. You had Claudette Mondesi and, and Miss Coffey and Mrs. Charles. Some, a little $40, and it wasn't easy getting a $40, Mr. Cobb with Elwin. You understand me? It wasn't easy getting $40. But 
they accepted that forty dollars and really did a fantastic job to ensure that the school succeeded we had a little bookshop where we were selling used school books but today you have a building that was never there and and when mr honeychurch mentioned mr bill moody i remember having a series of meetings with mr Moody, moody bill moody from the rockefeller brothers fund mr jim quarter from the inter-american foundation and mr larry layton also from the inter-american foundation and a lady named beth from oxfam oxfam um, canada and I was about meeting that group of persons. And I said to Jane, look, I'm not going to really be able to put a program together for you because at that time, I was more interested in getting funds for our own Kingsville development, um, where I was seeking funds for a sewing factory, an agricultural farm, you know, where we were at the Kingsville area. And I was asking for millions of dollars. So I didn't want to bring in another big amount and then I, I end up getting nothing so i brought jim to that meeting with me and said look the best person to tackle is mr bill moody from the rockefeller brothers fund and i never believe uh, you know that she ever rested from that day on in ensuring because it was not easy to get money all from those institutions but we have to give her a lot of credit, and I think, Mr. Batmari, you put the program together. And you are, you are fine. I remember when I did the budget, the first budget for the school, because I had to find money to pay Mr. Mr. Mari. I said, I was told to have an agricultural program that would finance the school. You know what I said? Which today it could do it. I said the only way I could I could write it, but I'm not going to sign it. The only way agriculture could support the school, you have to plant the whole Windsor Park Savannah with marijuana. What we are going to do right now, Miss Louis has to do it, and that is the launching of the magazine by Team Dominica. Ladies and gentlemen, the much awaited and talked about magazine is here. Take a good look at it. I realize we are having a lot of first for this reunion. Our first commemorative magazine, first school to bring everybody together on the Rona roof for a union and there are some more first coming. Look out for it. Now, in this issue of our ma official magazine, we are excited and delighted to let you know that we did it on our first anniversary, another first. Give yourself a round of applause for that. The magazine gives important highlights and events from our humble beginnings in 1974 to date, covering a span of over 40 years with articles from our founder, past and present principals, past and present teachers, and lots more. There's even a puzzle that we want you to really do it yourself as fun. We hope this publication will inspire all our members to do something out of the ordinary. We call on all our upcoming writers, poets, and artists to make good this opportunity to showcase your talent by contributing to our future publications. Our team 
is made up of Jerry Coppell, and as you heard from Mrs. Nicholas, that is out of the island. I know he would have loved to be here, but we have to big him up because he did work, we did work tirelessly on this magazine. I want to call up Alicia Defoe. Alicia, come up. Alicia is also another member who worked on the magazine. And uh, yours truly. So, so this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unveiling DCHS. Give ourselves a round of applause for that. So we have quite a few articles. We also have the. You remember this? Our first crest. And on there you have the school songs, both the school song and the welcome song. So you have a lot to look forward to. But I just want to let you know that this evening, Dr. Lennox Sonichet gave the lecture, but you have it in a book form. So much information about our school. So much information. When Mona, when Mona told me she wanted to debut a magazine, there was something inside of me that just stirred up, an excitement. Because finally, I've always wanted to contribute to DCHS. For all these years I've left, it has never left my memory of the beginning. And so when she asked me, and she said I, um, she wanted to do this, I was so happy to put my talent that I've, I've been doing magazine for a while and it was just a pleasure to be part of this, our very first magazine. So thank you, Mona. So without further ado, we want to here and now launch our magazine and we opened our magazine for sale so you can go to the back and have your copy. We are begging everyone in here, please purchase a copy. There are not many, so grab yours early. Thank you again. The topic that we dealt with was Dominica Community High School, a viable option for secondary education in the 21st century and beyond. We want to thank all those who made the contribution towards the initiation of the project. And I still call it a project because it is still developing as to the, the point which we have to go, particularly as we are talking about education in the 21st century and beyond. And you mentioned that we heard Mr. Mark Murray said that he saw the drawings of this um, Dominica Grammar School that they're going to put on now, and it's sort of frightful to him. But I have to tell Mr. Mark Murray that the, <laughs> we have to make more children in Dominica, first of all. And if you notice, every time that the common entrance um, figures are given, the numbers are dwindling. So it's not really that um, you don't have people to go to the club, it's just that the numbers are dwindling. And as he rightly said, of course we have to advertise the school so that the numbers can remain. But there is beauty in smallness. And this is what I would like us, even at the level of the Commonwealth of Dominica, to embrace. Remember when the pandemic came with Dominica, was the country, maybe in the whole world, that was managing the pandemic to a point where individuals were asking, what are we doing while we are managing? It is because of the smallness of Dominica that is, and of course, too much praise going our head and we just let our guard down, okay? So the smallness of the school right now, individuals are looking for less numbers in a classroom 
to send to their children, to send their children to. But again, people still have that stigma in their mind that their children are going to do agriculture, their children are going to clean the yard, their children are going to clean the classroom, their children are going to do so many things. What school and what institution do you go to that the children don't know? I ask you that question. As I said, I went to the convent high school. I cleaned nuns' toilet. What happened to me? It was part of our service to the institution. And you heard what Gillian said. That is only when she came to the school, she learned to do several things. And a lot of, for example, there was one husband who always bothers me. Because whenever they have their bottles of Eric of coke etc etc I mean we have the bottles that you dispose of now but before you know you had the glass bottles at the school when we brought that in the students were always taught that after you drink you wash the bottles and you put it in the case and she has that at her house so every time you would take a bottle and not wash it she's at war with him again the basic thing of cleanliness you put the bottles there with the liquid in it, what's going to happen? Ants. Okay? So basic things that are taught to the children in that small environment, which they don't. Now, with the pandemic again, the staff is here. Community high school is able to start and operate when other schools were not able to start and operate because of the smallness of the school. So then you find other schools were mumbling, but then we had taken steps to ensure that we had the physical space so we could have allowed our students and staff to come in in person to do what they have to do. We have the greenhouse technology and their solar energy. Community High School is the only school in Dominica that produces its own energy. And I miss in the Caribbean. And it could have been much better, much better, if the execution of the last project was done to how we want to do it. Again, politicians have a problem with you all. OK? All right. You have the computers. The children have their computers. And most importantly, as Mr. Thomas said, you, the individuals, have to now send your children to the community high school. Because if you don't send your children there, what story are you telling the other people or your families? I say boldly, sometimes the Ministry of Education facilitates people. You register a child with a scholarship with a bursary, and then they go and then you hear the child say, okay, I get a space there, I get a space there. But when the children are expelled, from another school, which is the first school that they run to. And then you hear the story, but is there I wanted the child to go in the first instance, you know. So then when we started playing our vary, of course, our numbers went down. But then you had to make the point to make people understand that the school was not a second class school. And in the community high school could have many more students that it have now, but we had taken that decision. We are, sorry to say it, we are not taking rejects, okay? Because it is unfair. It is unfair that people make first choices, they come, and then you go to another school. And then one of the things too that we have to be very, I have to be very thankful to Mr. Anthony Lockhart when I became principal. As the others said, when they came to the school, from the time they got into third form, they went to another school. When I came to the community high school, I had people children sitting, quote unquote, in cow shed. Because, as I said, I was not going to put effort into children, first, second, and third form, and then another school takes fourth and fifth form. There was no way that was going to happen. So I, we didn't have space. But we made space and we progressed. And that was Mr. Lockhart, I remember, when they, could, they come in, okay, they're there. From the time that they start doing well, first grade, second grade, you are looking at them, okay, we're going to get a good crop at CXC. They just disappear and they go to another school. St. Mary's Academy took them, but the grammar school, Mr. Lockhart would tell them, no, 
I'm not taking you. Mrs. Nicholas did not expel you, but I'm not taking you. Go back to the school which has given you the base and you can get a very good education at the school. And I thank him in his, in his absence for that. He took that, he never shared it. He told me so he's not in, on island or you cannot kill him. But he took that effort to ensure that the students remained at the school. I remember Ayub Moransi, the year I came in, Ayub was leaving. And he had a spit as SM already. And then he said, boy, that lady mean business, mommy. I'm staying at the school. Are you live to be the first student in the Commonwealth of Dominica to get a scholarship from Scotia Bank to do his first degree? You see? So this is what I'm saying. You have Watson, Gloria Watson was at the National Bank. Gloria Watson was the first student to get a scholarship from the National Bank to go and do a first degree. So we have had a lot of individuals and I'm saying that if we allow, if we allow a cloud to come over County High School, it is to our own detriment. So the school is a viable option for secondary education in the first to 21st century. And we mentioned about networking. It is very important that we continue to network. Ms. Caprice talk, talked about the comfort and quality. And Mr. Thomas underscored it again. Comfort and quality. And of course, as he rightly told Mrs. Joseph, Miss Inti, she can stand it, don't worry. She's a St. Lucian by birth, but she, all, she have all Dominican thing in her. And her husband will fix her well. She can take all the mepui and ask when I left, as I told them, they had a very wonderful evening for me. I, once I have life, I shall be there to help them at the Dominica Community High School. So those of you who have influence on your politicians, you can, Mr. we have a lot there. We can tell them that the school can continue to be a viable option, not when people want to send the children to the school because they were not accepted at another school or they were expelled from another school. We have to stop doing it. Thank you very much for all of you coming. Continue the vision. Continue supporting Team Dominica. It doesn't matter if you are not satisfied with the level. That's what happens in Dominica. You know, everybody looking on to see how we going, how we going, and then they will jump on board. You have done well, and continue to do yourself well. So Mona will continue. Thank you. Our moderator for the evening, Mrs. Celia Nicholas.